Good afternoon, all, <coughs> and uh, thanking, thank you for making it through to this, what is called as a graveyard shift. The last day of the conference post lunch, it's very difficult to get people out here. Uh, first and foremost, in terms of what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'd like to thank Amit for the, the mic drop moment. I think that's something which all of us needed pretty badly. And I think uh, the Hayat people have done a good job in forecasting the mic drop moments because they did not give anybody handheld mics. <laughs> uh, we'd have had a lot of disturbed, uh, <coughs> damaged mics. Uh, what I'm going to leave you with more questions than answers. I think it's a good one to recollect and decide what is it we are going to do after the last couple of days of heavy dose of AI, machine learning, and data. A little bit about a company, Fly Dubai. We are based in Dubai. We call ourselves as called as a travel enabler. The biggest achievement in the last uh, 13 years plus, if I may say so, it's to open up 75 new destinations which were not covered, uh, which did not have direct flights to Dubai. And that is what we are all about. We are about enabling travel. This is our route map. Uh, this is the May 23 route map. And uh, every month, virtually, we have new points getting added to it. As you see, predominantly, we are in the Middle East, East Africa, Eastern Europe, a little bit of Western Europe, and the Indian subcontinent. The highlight of 2022 was the match day shuttle flights. And uh, we did not engage with any forecasting to decide which team we wanted to support. Okay, we just trusted in the hand of God, and we went with Argentina. <laughs> and uh, during the match day shuttle flights, we had a maximum of about 30 return flights to Doha between du Dubai and Doha. And we carried 171 nationalities during that period because most of the fans decided to have their base in Dubai and this visit for their game days. We carried about 133,000 plus fans across the period. Now, a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today. The revenue management systems, I have been uh, in the industry for about 35 years, and 30 years of it has been in revenue management. So we just had a handful of players in the revenue management space for about 25 plus years. We had about possibly around five kind of marketing emails we used to get from vendors about revenue management system in the 27 years I have been in this business. And in the last two and a half years, I got some 20 plus, and actually that 20 number was about four weeks back. So I had to update as of today, possibly about 25 plus number of different system vendors who say they have an AI ML based revenue management solution. Now, in terms of the revenue management science, what we used to say is we started off with a leg base from a no revenue management system to a leg based revenue management system. We said between three to five percent incremental revenue is what we can get. And when we moved from a leg based revenue management to an OND revenue management, we said about one to two percent based on all the pods research. This is what we said we are going to get it. Now, if you look at the new gen revenue management people, they say they can guarantee us between eight to 20%. I would like all of us to step back and take stock of this and saying that airline business typically runs with between three to 5% profit margins. And if these soothsayers were to be believed, we move to a fantastic business with a 25 plus percent profit margins. Something for us to think about. And all the revenue management signs over the last uh, three, four decades have been based on in-depth studies based on mathematics, simulations, and we have invested a lot on that. Now, 
the new revenue management system, it says, you know, put all your data into an AML. Don't worry about what is happening inside. Don't worry about what are the models which are built. We will come with a solution, implement the solution. Now, is this something which reality, something for us to go with? Now, the questions which I believe we have to ask, saying that, okay, how much do we trust to say that put all the data, don't know what is going to happen inside, and say just believe the output and implement it. But quite often they say no human intervention required. Is this something which we can go with? And what does it mean in terms of do we forget about everything we have learned over the last three plus decades and say that, okay, we forget about it, no need of people, everything the machine is going to take care, to take care of. And how exactly do we measure the benefits out of it? We do not have a pods equivalent kind of a scenario where we have done an in-depth study into the benefits of these systems. Something of note, important for us to note, if you believe that you're going to get an X percentage incremental revenue by doing a proper implementation of an RM system, by a poor implementation of an RM system, you could lose three times more. With an airline business, which we are talking about very thin margins, is that the risk we can afford to take. Now, do I mean by all these statements to say that we have to shy away from AI ML? Do I need to run away from it and we say, we're just going to stick to our traditional methods? Definitely not. The good things I've heard in the last couple of days is about what we call as an explainable AI. We see, put something as we say, AI can give us insights which we never even thought was there. But it's important we understand what do these insights tell us. If there are new things which they throw at us, do we say, can we justify it? That is what called us, can we do a causal causality and say that, okay, this is the reason why the system is telling us this output. Rather than blindly going ahead and trusting, saying whatever it says must be right. So it's important to understand what is the data we use to train the model. Now, why do I say it's important to understand what data it's used? Because we need to understand what data is not used. Because in spite of all the uh, trail of what we call as a data exhaust, what we have, there is still a lot of unknowns, things as an individual airline you do not know. As an airline, you know how many people looked at you, and you will know how many people booked at you. What you did not know is how many people booked with the competition. You get to know, especially with the look to book ratios being so high, going from hundreds to five hundreds, just because somebody looked and did not book with you does not mean he went to the competition. Okay. That information is not there, and I, I don't think the moment you understand these are all the information which an AI system does not have, you need to understand the outputs has to be accordingly edited and understood. Because AI systems can be only as good as the data what you provide. Just like <clears throat> Dr. Michael uh, said yesterday, about if you mask 30%, 50% of the data, you can't do any predictions at all. If you have 70% above data, you can say you can make some reasonable predictions. So you need to understand what is the percentage of data which the AI ML system does not have. And how are you going to account for it? What are all the validation mechanisms we have? So it's important that 
we understand the data which is used and what are all the features and weights with a human intervention you are providing to the system. Now, even after that, a lot of people say go with the Big Bang approach. Pick that up, implement it, you will get the benefits. Whereas we believe we need to go with a phased approach. Yesterday, as many of the speakers said, we have to may take the baby steps. I would always like to recollect 20 plus years back when the OND revenue management was new, there were a few airlines which jumped straight in without sorting out their processes. And they dropped the OND system like a hot potato. We should not make the same mistakes out here. It's important that we understand these are the new changes to the technology. This is what is possible. And how is it we take a step-by-step -step approach without risking our revenue? So we have to be thorough. Don't get overwhelmed by the fancies. Don't get overwhelmed saying that, okay, this is what an AI system gave us. It says, yes, that's fantastic. It's opened up possibilities. Doesn't mean we are going to just jump in. And we have to make sure expectations are going to be right. Definitely did, don't get carried away by the sales pitch of 8 to 20 percent incremental revenue. Now, having said all these, if the soothsayers were to be believed, saying that, okay, the machines have become so intelligent, even with 50% or 70% mass data, they're going to give us accurate predictions. And the airline is really going to go from a 5% margin to a 25% margin. Yesterday, I bumped into a revenue management guru, Dr. Bilabhava, I said, both of us will start doing lectures, not in the revenue management forum. We are going to go create a Netflix channel called Primitive Old Data Scientists. And that's where <laughs> we'll be going. So there is a lot of things going on, a lot of exciting things, a lot of flutter out here, a lot of people, very, a lot of uh, activity going on, a lot of turbulence going on. It's important to understand only when the tide goes away do we get to know how many were swimming naked. Thank you very much. <laughs>